In this video, I'll be building a small charcoal forge, perfect for hobby projects like making knives and small tools. One of the more important components in a charcoal forge is the blower that forces air into the flames. A great choice if you want to build a larger forge is a hairdryer, and this project can easily be scaled up. But for this video, my forge will be fully manually powered, requiring no electricity at all. This project was sponsored by Wargaming's free-to-play game World of Tanks. Check the video description for a download link and bonus code, and more on that later. This forge starts with a steel bread pan and a one foot long iron pipe with a matching end cap. Halfway down one side of the pan, a hole is drilled through the wall so the pipe can make its way through. I'm using a pipe that is three quarter inch in diameter. This will be what directs the airflow into the charcoal. Now using my angle grinder, I cut a slot halfway down the length of this pipe, which will allow air to vent out of the side. If you don't have an angle grinder, you can instead drill a series of holes in the pipe where the cut would otherwise be. With the end cap threaded onto the iron pipe, it's time to turn our attention toward insulating the forge. Years and years ago, I made a video about a small propane forge built inside a soup can. And in that video, I introduced the idea for a forge lining made from a 50-50 ratio of plaster of Paris and sand. That is the same mixture I will be using here. I just measure the amount of sand and plaster by eye. It will work fine even if the ratio isn't exactly 50-50. Once mixed, the forge lining is shoveled into the bread pan and spread such that there is a V-shaped cavity running through the center. At this point, the iron pipe is set into place while the plaster is still moldable, with the vent in the pipe facing upwards. We can now finalize the shape of the cavity that the charcoal will sit in and make sure that plaster covers all four walls of the forge. The forge itself is now completely finished. We just need to find an air supply. I was browsing online and found these extremely cheap fireplace blowers shipped direct from China, and for the price, they seemed worth trying. The air output is not huge, but it should be enough. The first step here was to cut a small block of wood that will act as a spacer so I can mount the blower on its side without blocking the air intake. I zip tied the blower to the block and then glued this assembly to one side of a large baking sheet. The forge is set on the opposite side and the two components are connected with a length of vinyl tube. And it's now time to see how this works. Some lump charcoal is piled on, and it can be started with either lighter fluid or a torch. With some assistance from the blower, the coals become hot very quick. You must have a lot of ventilation when using a charcoal forge like this because of the risk of carbon monoxide. This is not an indoor project. Stay safe. I decided I would test this forge on this old hammerhead. I don't really have a use for a hammer like this one, but I could use a new scale removal hammer for cleaning up my welding work. A scale removal hammer is basically a blunt chisel, so all I need to do is heat this head in the forge and pound the end flat. Once the end is narrow enough, I can finish the chisel on my grinding wheel and then reinstall it on a handle. It seems like this should work pretty well at least well enough to match my terrible welding skills. Finally, let me go over a few of the things I like about this forge design. First of all, most of the heat is directed upwards, so the forge itself stays relatively cool to the touch. Charcoal is quite a good insulator as well, so though I don't recommend it, you can grab the outside of the coals and adjust them by hand, without burning yourself. It's only very hot in the center. Now, since the forge blower is fueled by hand power, you save a lot of charcoal by not turning the crank when items are not in the forge. Combine that conservation with no use of electricity, and it's a pretty efficient design that can be used in any situation. You could even make the charcoal yourself, just as it's been done for centuries. Charcoal and fire is where all the heavy machinery we have today first began. Which brings me to my sponsor, Wargaming's World of Tanks. This is a completely free-to-play game, which you can download through a link in the video description below. And if you use the bonus code I've provided, you start with an extra tank, free in-game currency, and seven days of premium time. World of Tanks has elements of many different game types. It's a vehicle-based game with very authentic tank models. 
and the battles play out with quite a lot of strategy and teamwork involved. With hundreds of different tanks you can play as and deeply customize, there's an RPG element as well. You really can't beat the free price tag, so download it and give it a try. Thank you for watching this video. If you liked it, leave me a comment. I'd love to hear from you. Subscribe to see more, and I'll see you next time.